Here we're just going to look briefly at an example on an actual data set where we're going to calculate precision, recall, and accuracy for uh, LDA classifier, which isn't that important. We're just going to calculate the scores. And then we're going to compare that to a very, very naive um, classifier. So let's look at the practical example. This example actually comes from this textbook, An Introduction to Statistical Learning, a really nice textbook. And it's one of the classifiers that they look at. It's specifically a LDA classifier where they're trying to predict whether someone is going to default or not, I think, on their on their credit card. So here we've got um, things that are really negative and um, things that are really positive. In other words, the no, the person doesn't default or yes, the positive person defaults. We, here we've got the predictions of our model. So here we predicted no, the person won't default. And here we predicted yes, the person um, did default. And what we want is we want to calculate accuracy, precision, and recall, and if one, for this classifier model. But then we are also going to look at um, what the scores are when we just always predict that the person doesn't default. So I guess to calculate these things, it will be useful to know um, to just basically map this to our confusion matrix. Of course, this is just the confusion matrix, but let's just quickly annotate what these different cells are. So here, that cell, uh, these are things that are negative and we classify them as negative, so they're true negatives. This cell here, that's things that have been classified as positive and they actually are positive, so that's true positives. Here, this cell here, these are things that we classified as negative but they're actually positive. So these are false negatives. And then finally, this cell here, these are things that we classified as positive, but they're actually negative. So these are false positives. Okay, so we start with the accuracy. And the accuracy, just as a reminder, is out of all the points in our data set, how many of them did we correctly classify? And you can map that to this confusion matrix thing by saying all the points that we classified as negative that were actually negative plus all the points that we classified as positive and were actually positive and that's just equal to you can plug in these numbers here so that's 97.25 percent that's the accuracy cool now let's calculate precision so precision again out of the things that we predicted as positive how many of them were actually positive so out of the 81 plus 23 points that we predicted to be positive, 81 of them were actually positive. So here we get a result of 77.88. Recall. Um, so now what we're doing is we're looking at the points that are actually positive and we're saying out of the points that are actually positive, how many of them that we classify as positive. So out of the points that are actually positive, so there are 2, 5, 2, plus 8, 1 points that are actually positive. Out of those, 81 we classified as positive. So that's equal to 24.32%. So what we see here is, despite getting a quite high accuracy, this is clearly a high precision system. We're outputting a positive when we're very, very sure that it's positive. And that means that we're often misclassify things that are positive as being negative. Okay, now the second question was to use a classifier that always just predicts negative. So let's just quickly write out um, mathematically what this classifier does. So basically what it says is f of x uh, given w that is always equal to zero, just irrespective of the input. It really doesn't have any parameters. Or in code, you could have written it like this. So in code, you could have said, um, if we're going to write in, in Python, that if uh, predict, this is our function, it takes in some uh, input feature vector x, and what it does is it always returns zero, irrespective of x. Okay, this is probably the dumbest thing you can do, right? It's, I mean, there's no learning involved here. It's a stupid model. It just always outputs negative. Now, on this data set, what happens if we do this? Let's calculate the accuracy. 
So the accuracy, as before, it looks at all the points that we correctly classified as negative plus all the points that we classified as positive divided by all the points in total. So in this case, let's just maybe we should scribble out the confusion matrix for this. So here um, we're going to construct the confusion matrix to ma make the rest of our lives a little bit easier. Uh, we need we're on this same data set, right? So we need to basically map these numbers to this classifier that always predicts that something is negative. So our prediction zero, um, that's where all our points are going to land on in these two cells. We aren't going to have any false positives and we aren't going to have any true positives because we're never predicting that with this um, dumb classifier. So our false positives and our uh, true positives, both of those are just going to be zero and zero. What about the true negatives and the false negatives? So basically we know that um, if we look at the true labels, at the true labels, then we have um, this many things that are really negative and this many things that are really positive. And all that we're doing is we're just classifying all uh, the negative things, these things, we're just classifying them all as negative. So, okay, so fine. So that's nine, six, six, seven. And all the positive things, these 333 positive cases, we're also classifying them as negative. So they're going to be false negatives because they're actually positive. So there's a triple three in there. Okay, great. So now this is our dumb classifier. This negative classifier gets an accuracy. Now let's go through here. So we know we've got 10,000 points. At the top there, our true negatives are nine, six, six, seven plus our true positives, zero. So we have nine, six, six, seven. Awesome, so we have a classifier with an accuracy of 96.67%. Okay, this is scary, right? Because what happened here was we basically didn't have any training, we didn't do anything, and we still get an accuracy that's just, you know, less than a percent of this accuracy. And that highlights the problem with just um, using accuracy to classify things. Because the problem here is we've got massive imbalance. And by just classifying everything as negative, we're seemingly doing really well. And that's why precision and recall are so useful. So precision in this case is again the true positives divided by the true positives plus the false positives. And this is going to be equal. So we've got zero true positives. Okay, sad face. We've got zero true positives again. And how many false positives? Zero as well. Okay, I don't know what that number is. Um, okay, but some mathematician would be able to tell you, but let me just do Python and say not a number. Okay, and then recall is going to be equal to, again, true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives. Okay, let's check this out. So our recall, our number of true positives, zero divided by, and now we've got true positives, zero plus, and then false negatives, here we've got triple three. That's equal to zero percent, okay. So what we see is despite having pretty high accuracy here, um, precision and recall actually tells us uh, what we wanted to do. Maybe we could have made our negative classifier a little bit better by just saying, predict that the thing that you're most confident about, that single point out of these 10,000, just for that one point, predict that that is positive, okay? So then you would have uh, 9, 6, 6, 7, and you would have 3, 3, 2, and then you would have a 1 here. And that would mean I would get 100% precision, but my recall would still be uh, very, very bad because you would have 1 divided by triple 3. And that's the nice thing about precision and recall that you um, basically can see exactly what your classifier is doing. Um, I didn't actually finish the question because it also asked to calculate F1 and you can go ahead and do that um, on your own. In this case, I think it will just be zero because you're multiplying nine with zero, um, but I'm not uh, a mathematician, so I'm not entirely sure. But if you did, for example, use that slightly improved negative classifier, then the F1 score would still be quite low for this case where you have a 1 here and 332 there.